Hi friends! My name is Mei Lin and welcome back to my channel. I am a flutist, music teacher, and performer located in the city of Toronto, Canada, and this is my series where we learn how to play the flute from scratch. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me here today. Uh, in this video, we'll be learning about making a good tone and a good sound. Um, so if you're in, if you're excited for that, um, keep watching. Um, also, if you do have any issues practicing or just want a little motivational boost, um, feel free to check out my free practice guide located in the description down below. And also, of course, if you have any questions or anything, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments as well. So thank you so much again, and let's just get started. So as per usual, Trevor Wise book, and today we'll actually be starting at the bottom of page 19 and also looking at the exercises on page 20. Okay, so I'm going to put it up right here. So right at the end of page 19, uh, Mr. White has a little paragraph here about uh, tone development. So I'm just going to read it first and then I'll discuss uh, what he talks about here. All right, tone development. The development of a beautiful tone is most important to your further progress. In these exercises and in the exercises which follow, experiment with the speed of the air which you blow into your flute. Does increasing the air speed make a firmer tone? If it does, try. And then here he has them sings. So when he talks about a firmer tone, um, there's different sounds, of course, that the flute can make. Um, and you always want to kind of achieve um, an open tone. So a sound where it kind of rings similar to a singer. Um, that's kind of the sound that we want to go for when we're playing the flute. When he talks about firmer tone, uh, a lot of beginners have this issue where they squeeze too much with the embouchure. And so it makes a really pinched and forced sound. Um, for example, <laughs> So you can actually hear that there, like it's there's this tenseness. There's no way that it can open up. It just sounds very compressed and tight. And so that's what Mr. Y means when he says firm. So if you find that you do kind of have that tone at the moment, he says try these things and see if it'll help. Okay. So a decreasing the size of the hole in your lips through which you blow. While abstaining a clear sound, try to be economical with the quantity of air used. Okay, so here he's talking about um, particularly the embouchure hole, so where we are blowing uh, our air out through our lips. So if you find that it's a little bit too firm, what you can do is you can actually try and experiment with how big the embouchure hole is. Do you need it wider? Do you want it spaced out more like this onto the side, like spread out? Or do you want to make it more round and open like this? These are things that you can experiment with and with the air speed in particular. Do you want to try it faster, slower, colder, hotter? All these different things that you can experiment with. And the second point here, B, moving the jaw backwards and forwards slightly. Note any improvement. Play each note as long as possible. Take big breaths. Avoid turning the flute blow hole or the embouchure hole in on your lip. No more than half should be covered. See the front of this book. So I find that tone development is something that uh, takes time. So it's not something that you'll necessarily always get right away. There will definitely be moments or there might be moments where um, you find that you have that click that, oh my gosh, that like finally I was able to get it. What did I do? Um, and sometimes it's just a journey and that's totally okay. Um, it's definitely something that you'll continue to work on no matter what level of playing you're at, you always want to develop a good tone. Um, so what I would recommend would be to listen to lots of your favorite flutists. Um, every flutist has a different sound um, and the way that they produce things, the way that they use vibrato, etc, etc. Um, so making sure that you do a lot of listening will help your help to train your ear as to how you want to sound. And um, take that into account that they, if you're listening to professionals, of course, they've been playing for many, many years. And at this point, you've probably just started, or you're maybe perhaps you're getting back into playing. So be forgiving with yourself and just experiment with maybe starting with that middle range where you're most comfortable. 
and see what you like. Record yourself. Um, I used to do, I hated doing that at the beginning, um, but I just got like a little audio recorder, a little Zoom recorder. You can get it for maybe $100, $200, or you can just use your phone. Everyone has a phone now. Um, so even if you just turn the video to the other side, so you have a blank screen, if it's facing, if it's on your stand, for example, and just record the audio. Um, it's great to be able to listen objectively to what you sound like because what you sound like to your ear when you're playing is going to be quite different um, when you listen to it on a recorder. And if you do do the recorder uh, method, try and pretend that you're not listening to yourself. You're listening to a friend. Um, what would you say to them to improve their tone or their sound or their technique? Um, and then you can apply those to yourself and you can experiment with that. Um, and then you can see how that goes. Okay, so I'm going to flip the page to page 20. And these are some basic tone exercises um, that Mr. Y has written out here. Um, so in flute, we have a tendency to do long tones. I mean, this is something that a lot of instruments also use um, to develop tone. Uh, so if we take a look here at the tone exercise, I'm just going to put the first line here. Um, so what Mr. Y wants you to do at the very beginning is that he wants you to establish a really good solid note to start off from. So your foundation essentially. So here he has B. And just in case you forgot, the little uh, kind of like a rainbow plus the dot in the middle, that's a fermata, also known as a pause. So you'd want to uh, stay on that note for as long as possible, as long as your breath uh, lasts. And then what you do as you go through the exercise um, is that all you're going to do is play that note, listening to the, the sound and the tone color that you're making, and then move to one note underneath. So if you know the chromatic scale, which at this point we don't know in the book, um, but if you do, uh, then you can go down chromatically like that, or you can just follow what he's written down in this exercise. Don't forget to do the repeats as well. So this is something that you want, you don't need to have a metronome on or, or anything like that. This is again, just for you to experiment and listen to yourself and how you feel and how the notes sound. And again, a recorder also really helps. Okay, so I'm just gonna play a little bit of this so that you can kind of get an idea of how to approach this. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with that nice uh, middle register B. Oh yes, and also don't feel bad um, if you can't hold your note as long as me at this point. You may be able to actually hold it longer. That's amazing if you can, um, but don't feel bad if you can't. So for me, the first time is kind of like a warm up. So, so far I haven't been able to play today. So the second time I played it, I liked the second time a little bit more just because it had a more open sound. You can hear it for me, it's like it's ringing and it can kind of spin out throughout the room. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the next bar here. So that's just an example of how this exercise would work. And when you're playing um, different reiterations of the same, so when you do a repeat, for example, 
um, really try and listen to the beginning, the middle, and the end of each of those notes, especially that transition between the two notes as well, and see what, is there something that needs to change? Remember those three things that I like to bring up, your embouchure, your air, and your fingers. So it could be any of those three things that uh, can kind of affect what's happening with the notes. Um, so when you're holding the notes, definitely think about your embouchure and your air. Those are the two things that you're going to think about when you're playing those notes and then when you move to the other note, then think about the fingers. It shouldn't be too difficult at this point. You're just moving one or two fingers. Um, yeah, but really keep that in mind and definitely record. I think that's going to be the, the biggest thing that will help um, when you develop your tone. Uh, all right. So you can also do not just what's written here, but you could also go up as well. So again, starting on that B, then you can go up to a C or a C sharp and then D, and then you could do variations. So I'll post the second line here, here. and the second line here. So he has three notes um, instead of just the two. So for example, like, I mean, you'd start again with the B. So you get that nice solid sound in, in your ear. That is one way that you can start developing your tone uh, is by working on long tones. Um, another thing I'm going to introduce to you um, that is not talked about in this book is something called harmonics. So if you look at some of the basics uh, of uh, tone production and sound, um, is sound is made up of waves. and um, for notes, there are different fundamentals. So you get the, the, the base of the note, but then you'll actually be able to hear if you, for example, if you have a, an acoustic piano and you hold the um, dampening pedal down and you uh, hold one note or you press one of the low notes and then you'll hear the ringing, the friendly vibrations of the other notes, um, which is kind of interesting. If you haven't been able to try that, try that someday. Um, that is what an harmonics are. So there's different frequencies in the pitch um, that you don't necessarily hear right away, uh, but there's different ways that you can hear that. So on the flute, when we're working on tone, and harmonics is key to helping us uh, really get the right pitches and the right sound and the right openness. Um, so what I would do is I would start um, particularly on a, com a note that you're comfortable, the lowest note that you're comfortable with. So let's start on a D for example. So how it works is you're going to start with getting the nicest low D that you can. Once you're comfortable with the sound of that note, then what you're going to do is you're going to overblow the note. So you're going to try and get the high octave D when you're fi still fingering the low D. So for example, oh, and make sure you, you're not allowed to tongue between the notes. So it's all about um, your air support. <laughs> And then what you can do is you can try getting the next partial up. So the first partial is an octave. So you have D to D. And then uh, the next one is D to A. So that would be a fifth, a perfect fifth. And that's also something you can experiment with going back and forth between the enharmonic and the uh, actual fingered note. So then the next one after that A is going to be a D again. So that's as high as I would go uh, for now. And if you can't get that high, that's totally fine. Um, there are also higher end harmonics, so you would actually get into a dominant seventh up there um, after that D. But don't worry about that for now. Uh, but try experimenting with that and see what you can do, what, what needs to change with your air support and with your embouchure. And if you actually have to experiment again with what Mr. Y talked about, like moving your jaw, maybe bringing it uh, forward, bringing it back. There's all sorts of different things that you could try. Um, 
there are uh, also different ways that you can uh, keep note of what you've done. So what I used to do when I was uh, first beginning, uh, I would have a little notepad and I would actually just write little notes about uh, what I was trying. So I try, let's say, for example, tightening the embouchure, so I'm making it a little bit more, a little bit smaller. Uh, and then I would put like yes and no. Did it work? Did I like it? Uh, and then check yes, check no. So it's a way of just uh, keeping track of what you've tried. Um, and if you feel like uh, that helps, then that'd be great. And there's always different ways to approach uh, developing tone. And also, um, don't feel bad again if it takes a long time. Uh, tone development is just that. It's the development of your tone and it's going to be something that you'll continue to do um, for the rest of your playing career. I mean, if you're just a hobbyist, it's something uh, that never ends, <laughs> which is a good thing. So that's it for today. Um, so thank you again for joining me here. Um, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. And also, if you are having any issues practicing, feel free to um, check out my free practice guide also located in the description. Uh, for next week's lesson, just to let you know, we are learning about B flat and also about key signatures. So that's a little bit of theory for next week. Uh, so thank you again so much for watching and uh, happy fitting.